So now you got an improv team, but then also you, I mean, you know you're blowing up on YouTube for doing your own individual stuff, starting off with like the adding words to popular theme songs. Yeah, so, uh, so I was at Second City and we were performing for like 50 people in a house. Um, you know, each, each weekend we were performing these sketch shows. And at the time, I had, we had, we had um, filmed a, a sketch called Passion, uh, Outtakes of the Christ, which was based on the Passion of the Christ. And uh, we put that on ifilm.com which at the time was YouTube, and we got the top, one of the top 15 short films of 2004. And at that same time, um, YouTube was starting to blow up as like this place that people went to go visit cat videos, and people still love cat videos. Can't do but it. <laughs> it was like, at the, at the time, it was like, wow, look at these cat videos. <laughs> so at the time, I was filming something, and, and we were getting only 50 people in a house at Second City, and more than, more than that were watching the iPhone stuff, so I was like, well, what do people want to search for on the internet? And that's when I thought of like, oh, Superman. And Superman Returns with, with Brandon Ruth was coming out, and so I was like, oh, I'll, just, I'll put words to like the theme song. And that kind of just like, I mean, I, like everything else on YouTube, you do one thing, and it's like, if that hits, you're like, all right, now I'm the guy that sings <laughs> songs. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's it's now been like almost nine and a half years, which is crazy. But I also feel like, I mean, which is great that, that you found that, because I feel like so many people will try things on YouTube and eh, it just kind of comes and goes and it disappears. It always seems like the challenge is finding that something that just hooks with people and they want to see more of. Well, and and I think that, but I also think that too many people are trying to, you know, if if Miley Cyrus has a great song, then too many people try to cover that song with Breaking Bad because that's what they think people want to see instead of doing something that they think is funny or that they have some sort of passion about. You know that that affects the audience. You know, if if they see that you're just doing some, you know, like. Uh, call me maybe video just because you know I don't know I think it gets old after a while I guess it kind of in a sense goes back to improv you have to bring your point of view yes. to it because that's what that's what people, if you play your point of view people are going to respond to that as yeah. opposed to playing to what you think they want exactly to say. That, I mean that's what I think at least yeah. I don't know so now you started off from doing that, and then all of a sudden you started doing bad timing. You, you, you do your own web series. What was the thing from like, all right, I need to just, instead of doing these one-offs of just doing words to the theme songs, but I want to do a narrative series. I had been doing them for a while, and, and you know, I'm an actor, so the, the crux at the end of the day was always, I wanted more people in the seats at Second City. Like, that was how I originally wanted to, to do everything. So at the end of the day, I was doing those YouTube videos to always get a larger audience for my other stuff. And it's just that the, the fact that the theme songs took off and that everybody always wanted to see the theme songs, well, I wanted people to know that I was an actor. So I had written this sketch for my sketch group at Second City, which never took off, which was about how when you always say, I want to be on a deserted island, who do you want to be with you? A lot of my guy friends would always say, oh, supermodel, no doubt. Uh, and I was always like, well, they're not going to want to be there with you. Like, they're going to want to be there with their husband or with, you know, somebody else, not just some, like, loser who thinks that they're hot. So that's where bad timing came from, and my friends always laughed at me because the theme songs were, like, filmed just me with my camera, you know, me doing everything, and they're like, no, you need a, a crew, you need a budget, you want to go big, and, and, and so that's what I did. God, you make it seem so easy, like, oh, well, all right, I just got a crew, <laughs> I got a budget, right? and we go, yeah, it was just that it easy, was not. boom, we are doing bad timing, and it was all no. set. No, coming from just me doing everything, I came to my buddy Cam, Cameron Fife, and, uh, who's also in my improv group, and I was like, all right, I want to do this. Now, I just, you know, want a couple wide shots of me and, and Eve sitting there, like, on a couch, and he's like, well, you need a grip truck, you need grips, you need lighting, you need a location, you need a uh, production manager, we need to pay the actors, and I was like, oh my god, like, the dollar signs just kept going up. <laughs> yeah, it was like, the entire, it was hard, because I was wearing so many different hats as, like, an actor, executive producer, creator, friend, um... But at the end of the day, you know, it was like a bunch of friends getting together and, and filming stuff. But there were definitely like, there were scorpions in the desert that we had to deal with while we were sleeping and um, the heat. <laughs> well, it's got to be nice to take an idea that you have your own that's been in your head for a while, but open it up to others. And I guess as we're tying it back into improv again, you just find a bunch of friends that love your idea, want a yes and it, yeah. and then make it even better than what you originally thought of. Yeah, and actually a lot of um, what ended up in, in the actual series is... Um, Usually on each, um, like if we did a close-up or a wide shot on each angle, we would allow the actors to do an improv take, only because 
I always feel like you create magic that way. You know, you know the beats, you know the intentions behind the characters, and if you just let people roll, they'll come up with, you know, just magic. It's it's just amazing to watch. Now you also, it's kind of a family affair, sorts, because you wrote the, you co-wrote this with your sister. Yes, wow. I did. Uh, my sister's a writer, and she worked on Chuck and, and Gossip Girl, and The Good Wife as a script coordinator, and, and she's written things before, but we've never actually written anything together. And so, I don't even remember, two or three years ago, I was just sitting at a, we have dinner together every Sunday night, my family all lives in Los Angeles now, and I was sitting there at dinner and I was like, this is like a, a no-brainer, why would, why would we have never done this? I'm going to make this, I'm going to get a budget for it, I want you to be involved, like, no question. And she said yes, and, and bad timing as it was originally created was me just doing monologues, essentially. Um, it was a piece for me to showcase me, and she took it and she was like, nobody's going to want to be in this with you if they don't have things to say. <laughs> and so she really created a dialogue, and for that I'm thankful. You know. Now did you, pretty much the, the way season comes, it's 15 episodes right here for mm -hmm. season one, did you have that idea of where you wanted to go originally, or was it working with your sister and adding like, well we need to flesh out more of the monologues? that the structure started breaking out. The first scene was always the first scene. We did we you know we uh, tweaked it a little but it's basically what it was. And then throughout the rest of the chapters or episodes, we sort of said what's the worst? You know, what's like really bad timing? Mean, what could what could be the worst thing that could happen now? And um, we kept going in that sort of form and function and, and sort of found where we ended up. And the big cliffhanger at the end sort of came like almost right as we were getting ready to film. It was just like, you know, we want something like a movie where you're, or a TV show at the end of a season. You want something that's going to be like, oh, wow, I can't wait for season two. And, uh, and that came at the very end. And, and it was like so exciting because it was like, yeah, I, I want to write that. I want to write what happened.